Hey, fellow Mathers, thanks for listening to the podcast. Before we get into this episode, have we got some really important information. Y'all, registration is now open for our Building Powerful Mathematics online workshops. These are the magic, the why, when, how, the details, the experience, making real mathing happen in you and your classroom. We've got a workshop targeted for your grade level. Whether you teach kindergarten, high school, or anything in between, you can find the best workshop for you at mathisfigureoutable.com slash workshops. mathisfigureoutable.com slash workshops. Registration is only open for a short time, so book your spot before it's too late. Now on to the show. Hey, fellow mathers, welcome to the podcast where math is figure outable. I'm Pam Harris, a former mimicker turned mather. And I'm Kim Montague, a reasoner who now knows how to share her thinking with others. At Math is Figure Outable, we are on a mission to improve math teaching. We know that algorithms are amazing historic achievements, but they are not good teaching tools because mimicking step-by-step procedures can actually trap students into using less sophisticated reasoning than the problems are intended to develop. I made it all the way through that sentence. (laughs) I took a really deep breath. Could you hear me? I took a totally deep breath right before I said that. (laughs) I did a singer's breath there. Okay. In this podcast, we help you teach mapping, building relationships with your students and grappling with mathematical relationships. We invite you to join us to make math more figure outable. Oh, All hi, right. Pam. Hey, Kim. So <laughs> listeners, you're going to have to tell us, do you hate it when we totally mess up the beginning? Because I don't know. You, you t- it's not going to help. So yeah. <laughs> what am I, what am I saying? If they say, yeah, we hate it, then we're not going to mess up again. I don't think that's a thing. Mm-mm. Yeah. Oh, it's well, May, okay. May, Pam, in the school year for us. Hallelujah. No kidding. Woo. Exciting. Okay. So it is the end of the school year for me, but not for everybody. Uh, mm-hmm. And calculators are a hot topic for teachers and students as they get older, aren't they? I know, yeah. I know that's less of a thing for elementary. Kids have access to them. We let them use them. And at times it might feel like building numeracy isn't as important if the kids are just going to reach for them. Ah. Or is it? So today, we're going to talk about something that we love to help students become judicious technology users. Yeah, because something we, you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. We now know that kids are forever going to have technology at their fingertips. Sure. And so rather than slapping their hands or put it away or, or giving them free reign to use technology whenever they want, I would prefer to help them to, for us as teachers to be purposeful in helping them become judicious users of technology. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when can they, when do they have power over something? When does it make sense to reach for um, technology? And you're right. We, we uh, found a way to make this happen. So um, Kim, we found this early in our uh, work together because yeah. the two of us were working with investigations in data, number and space. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's called beat the calculator. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. is, is it a game and a routine? I don't know what you call it. Is it a game? It's kind of a game. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. But I remember that it was in our fifth uh, fifth grade. It might have been in other grades too. But I remember as a fifth grade teacher, mm-hmm. um, in investigations, there was this thing, activity, activity mm-hmm. called Beat the Calculator. And I don't know that it matters as much, the setup. But kids, you know, you have cards. Uh, and you set kids up in partnerships. And there's a stack of cards. And one partner has a calculator Mm -hmm. and the other person has paper and pencil or dry erase or however you want to record. Mm -hmm. And in that routine activity game, the students would flip a card over and on it would have a problem. And the game was called beat the calculator Mm -hmm. uh, because the person who had paper, pencil or, you know, dry erase was asked to solve the problem while the other person was typing it in. Mm -hmm. And And the idea is, uh can, can that kid, yeah. Can you beat the calculator? Right. Yeah. And, and you you might be listening going, well, that's a dumb game. The calculator is going to win every time. Or is it Mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the investigation authors were super clever that they wrote problems that if you are just going left to right, yeah, calculator is probably going to beat you. Mm-hmm. But if you think, if you get outside the problem and look at it kind of from the 20,000 foot view and, and like, what do I know? Ooh, bam, chances are super high. You could actually beat the calculator. And what a fantastic uh, message to send to kids that 
I mean, you you can you pull that out and type all that in, but bam, I just used what I know and shoo, there you know I, I, I've got an answer, and I think that's um I think it's a brilliant message to send kids. Yeah, yeah. So Kim, let's play a little bit. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, you and I uh, decided earlier, and I came up with a couple, and you came up with a couple, um, and so I'm going to give you a first one. Okay. Now we can't really play beat the calculator here because I don't know, like one one of us would type, and the because we're we're sort of listening over the um you know, caraways, whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm going to read the question. Uh-huh. Listeners, you might want to write it down because often it's uh, like kind of just suggested that you might not want to do it left to right. You might want to like look at it. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to really race, but we'll talk about, you know, how might you solve it? Um, how long do you think it would take? Not, not like timing it, but do you think it will take longer to do in a calculator or just like reasoning? So mm-hmm. let, let's just start. So Kim, okay. here's your first, first one I made up. 17 okay. plus eight plus three. Oh, okay. Okay, so if you were to see 17 yeah. plus 8 plus 3. 28. Because? Uh, 17 and 3 is 20, plus 8 is 28. So like looking at it, you can almost see 28. Yeah, like yeah, that 17 sure. and 3 just, uh-huh. even, so so not going left to right, right? It kind of right. shows the bookends. And yep. Do you think that, that kids could see 17 plus 8 plus 3, grab the 17 and 3, make 28 yeah. um, quicker than they could type those in? Oh, for sure. For sure. I think most of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. And then maybe for older kids, I might have said 17 plus 8 plus 3 plus 12. Mm, nice. Yeah. And why did I choose 12? Uh, because 12 and 8 go together and that would be 20 and 20. 40. And you just said 40. And surely, yeah. even though I added that last number on, I think you're going to beat the calculator by more mm-hmm. with that one because it's going to take you longer to type plus 12 than it would be to just consider mm-hmm. Oh, that 20, bam. And then we're, yeah. we're at 40. Cool. Yeah. So, cool. So listeners, hopefully you get the idea that it's kind of this idea, you know, we're going to give you problems that, that you might be like, oh, you're cooking the numbers. Yes. On yes, purpose. we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're absolutely cooking the numbers because we want kids to realize the numbers are often that figure outable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You want one? Yep. I want one. What you got? Okay. I've got you 25 hundredths times seven times four. Does that look like 25 25- Divided by 100, like over 100, like as a fraction, 25 hundredths? No. No. Say 0. 0. 0.25. 0.25. Oh, 0. 0.25. 0. 0.25 times I guess 7 looked, times I guess 4. I could look at it. Okay, so 0. 0.25 times 7 times 4. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Okay. Cool. Okay, so I'm I'm the 0. 0.25 times 4 is instantly 1, and then mm-hmm. times 7, 7, bam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and, and like with 0. 0.25, kids, even if they don't type the 0, uh-huh. there's a lot more characters they have to type in, uh-huh. but if I can just think of a fourth of four and then times seven. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to beat the calculator on that one. All right. I got one for you. Ready? Yep. How about 123 minus 98? Mm, yep. Got it. Okay. What do you do? What are you doing? Got 25. How? Um, this time I just said 223, 25. So 98 plus two to get me to 100 ah, okay. plus two. So you just found the difference uh, between the numbers. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. 98 up to 123. Mm-hmm. Bam. You're at 125. Yeah. That one might be a little closer for some kids because um, they might have to think about it, but I don't know. Very, I mean, not yeah. very much. Um, okay. What okay, if? Want one? Yeah. Yeah. My I'm going to ask you one. Okay. Yep. Thanks. I'm give me some middle school. What if I ask you to find the equation of a line? Okay. With the point zero, zero and one, three. Yeah. <laughs> nice points. So instantly I can see the y-intercept is one mm-hmm. and that the rate of change is three. So it's just uh, one plus three X. Nice. So what would kids do in a calculator? I've often, uh, too often, um, cause it shouldn't ever happen. Have teachers say, all right, when you see this um, item on the high stakes test, you're going to go into the list editor and you're going to put the, those points in as a scatter plot, like stick them in the list editor. And then you're going to do the, whatever the buttons are for your particular calculator to get the line of best fit. And there, now you've got the equation of line between those. I can definitely beat the calculator here. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Hands mm-hmm. down. Like, did you I, say one plus three X? Um, yeah. Okay. Oh no, I didn't. I mean, I did, but I'm wrong. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay. It, sh- it should just be z- zero plus three X or three X. Okay. okay. I-, I was replaying your words. and I was like, did she say that? Or did she say, Y equals three X. I don't know. I don't know what you said. I meant, I meant to say Y equals three X. So okay. Zero, zero plus three X. Yeah. Okay. 
Good call. Good catch. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got one for you. Ready? Okay. The fraction one fifth times the fraction five forty seconds. So one over five times yeah, 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 yeah. forty two. Okay. Yep. What do you got? Uh, one fifth of five is one, but we're talking about forty seconds. So one forty second. Bam. The kids could type that in, but when they type it in, unless they're in a CAS calculator, they're going to get the decimal equivalent to one forty second. Right. That's funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we can just reason through that guy. Yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nice. So Pam, like yeah. or dislike beat the calculator? Um, I, I like it for uh, certain periods of time to give kids, I, I think you can uh, switch content, which makes it nice. Mm-hmm. And it gives kids this idea that they can think and reason and can be just as powerful uh, or more powerful as the calculator. Hey, one other quick thing I'll say about calculator use. I've done a lot of work with TI and their teachers teaching with technology uh, group. And um, one of the things that one of the instructors, I can't remember who it was, but I know it was a, a T cubed instructor said once was that the calculator that we often say to kids, check your work with a calculator, mm-hmm. which gives this impression that the calculator is the be it end all because you're going to check your work. It, it has the right answer. It's, it's, it's the thing. Instead, they said, strike that from your vocabulary. Don't say check your work on the calculator. Say things like, okay, are, do you know enough to put that in your calculator? Like this calculator is this limited machine. Do you have enough to know how to enter that in your calculator? If you mm-hmm. do, go ahead. You, you can do that and then see if, if, if you knew enough to put that in your calculator. You can see if you guys agree. So this, this is a different vantage point of it's not the calculator is like, go check. Go check your limited work. No, no, no. It's like, all right you're powerful enough like go you use what you know to see like put that in the calculator bam because it's this limited machine you have to know how to put it in there so that it can recognize Mm -hmm. what you're doing yeah i think Mm -hmm. that's a a decent way to do that how about you kim like or dislike oh strong like strong strong like i think there's so much that can be done with this uh routine um at different times of the year for different purposes maybe i'll talk about that in a minute but i i'm a huge huge fan but what I do think probably is happening in some people's heads right now is they're like, wait a second, it's about beating the calculator. And um, so that means there's got to be some sort of speed component, feels like competition. That doesn't seem right coming from you guys. Dun, dun, dun. Let's parse those those out a little yeah. bit. Let's talk about speed on one hand and competition yep. on the other. Can I start with competition real quick? Sure. So there is um, a bit of a social move right now, um, has been maybe for a hot minute, about no competition, competition's bad, everybody gets a trophy. Um, I don't actually adhere to that. I think competition's fine. Um, I think kids should lose sometimes. I think kids need to learn how to lose um, and learn how to win gracefully. And if they are a rotten winner, that's going to play out and kids are not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to work well for them socially. And so that, I think that's a, I think that's a necessary thing to help our kids learn resilience. And I'm going to suggest gently that maybe we have a little bit of resilient, less resilient problem, not less, because that sounds like they don't have any Um, kids who struggle with resilience uh, because of some social things that happen to say every kid should get a trophy and there shouldn't be competition and we're all winners. Um, when I, 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 I so I, I, I'm not at blood curdling, uh, ruthless competition, but I do think, I do think a little competition is a fine thing. And I think we, what, what we really should strive for is varying in our classes, the kinds of competitions we have so that, kids can rise to the top of the things they are good at. And we give everybody a chance to be good at things they're good at, honestly good at so that the uh, pride they have in winning is honest, honest, honestly won, honestly earned. Not actually sure how you think about that, Kim. What do you think? Uh, Well, you know, the phrase humble winner and gracious loser has been said on more than one occasion in my house because Ah. we we do like a good competition in our house. Uh, I was the parent who never let my kids win at Candyland or at whatever if I could help it. (laughs) Well, that's a bad example because it's all luck there. But yeah, I'm not about letting people win. But I think there is, there's, you know. I I totally, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you because I'm going to forget and I want to say it. 
So yeah. Candyland, Candyland is the easiest game to cheat at when your kids are young enough because you just find the card that gets that dumb game. I know, over but I'm soon. also not a cheater, Pam. Oh well, I just I just found the card. That would, <laughs> I didn't care who won. I wanted it over. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of I'm not a big fan yeah. of games where there's it's, nothing I can think about. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So I interrupted. That's you. okay. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Um. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, oh, sorry. oh, so, you know, I'm like, I'm a highly competitive person, but I also recognize. You are a little bit. Mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. But I also recognize that that is not where everybody's coming from. So if some kids in your class like a little competition and some don't, I love that you said we want varied experiences, right? I don't think that, that we could never have competition and that doesn't, the, the people that are motivated by that don't ever get an opportunity to be motivated. And if we, you know, all, yeah, we need both. So I do, I am okay with having some experiences with competition. What I love about this one in particular is that you can get better. This is not something that it's like, you're either good at it or you're not. Mm, This is about something that you have uh, the ability to learn. You have the ability to learn to be judicious. And as you gain more strategy, then it becomes uh, more readily available. I I could see having this experience at the beginning of the year And kids don't maybe own a lot of strategies. And so they're like, oh man, the calculator was winning more. So now we are going to grow. We are going to grow. We're going to learn more strategy and then check in. I could see doing it with some operations um, and not others. I just think there's so much that can be done here. Um, But that's that's really a nice way for kids to kind of be like, okay, yeah, calculator beat beat here. I was close in some of them. Yeah. And then, and then develop their strategies and they come back and they're whooping calculator. Well, yeah. It's I like, think it achieves so much to thinking and reasoning. Yeah. That's nice. That's not, yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Like so it. Like let's talk speed because speed is also involved in some ways. <sighs> Absolutely. And one of the things uh, I think that is super tricky right, right now, and, and maybe has been for a while in math education is this idea of speed that we culturally have built kind of um, uh, an expectation that we don't agree with that being good at mathematics is equivalent to being the fastest Mm -hmm. at, I don't know, retrieving things from rote memory. And we don't think that we don't think that uh, those are equal, that just because you're fast means that you're good. Uh, For example, you could have a kid that you could say uh, seven times eight and they quickly in their head go like the garden gate is made of six is 56, bam, 56. And they say that fast enough and they spit it out. And we're like, oh, good. Look how good you are at multiplicative reasoning. When we might have a kid who goes seven times eight. I know seven times seven is 49. So I need one more seven. That's 56. And that kid has already built more multiplicative reasoning just by knowing they can chunk Mm -hmm. the fact into chunks they know. And then they're thinking about those chunks and and they're putting them together. I would much rather have a kid do that kind of multiplicative reasoning to figure seven times eight than repeat a rhyme. Um, because they're not building multiplicative reasoning at all. They're just mm-hmm. dealing with a memory mnemonic. So it's not, we, we clearly are going to say they're not equivalent. We also would clearly say that we don't want a kid finding seven times eight by going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, two. Like we don't want them counting by ones and keeping track of those groups. That, that, indicate that if we see that kind of slow speed happening, we want to get under it. We want to figure out why kids are taking a while. If they're taking a while because they're using a less sophisticated strategy, well, then we want to help build their brains to be able to think more sophisticatedly. Mm -hmm. If they're taking a little bit longer because they're really grappling with sophisticated relationships, bam, we want to support them and, and, and celebrate that thinking. But at the same time, on the other hand, if they're being super quick and they're doing it in a, in a memorized kind of way, then we want to be like, nah, we're, I want to get under that too. And we're like, ah, I want to really encourage you to think and reason. All right. So all that little background on speed, thanks for listening. What, what about this game and speed? Kim, what would you say? Like how, 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 do, so why, why, are, why are we good with this game and speed? Or do you that's want a good, to- No, that's a good <laughs> question. So, so for me, it's about, um, are you thinking at all before you dive in. And, and I feel like it's acknowledging that it's worth thinking first. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how to put words to it. Yeah. For me, it's, it's a, a, a lot about 
acknowledging that there yeah. is something about efficiency. There yeah. is something about we don't really want you bogged down and taking forever when when that's not necessary. Yeah. And so I think we can say, yeah, we do want you to be efficient. And look how efficient you can be when you are powerful, when you own these powerful relationships. Yeah. And and put the calculator in its place that it is it is only as efficient and smart and able to do um with what you can put in it. I think I th- I think that might be it for me. Um and and I am absolutely loving where this conversation is going because I have to tell you I've had a post it note on my monitor for the last month and I can't wait to show this with you. But um it's knowing that there are some problems that you would never touch a calculator for. And as we build your brains to be more and more sophisticated, then you identify more of those. But there are some problems that are funky and you could think through them, but maybe given what you're trying to do in that moment, it's not, it's not necessarily worth the time. Like Absolutely. If I'm, if I'm stringing along a ton of problems, then so. Well, if you're so in the I'm midst, gonna... if you're in the midst of a large problem, I, this is my best example. You're in the midst of a large problem. You're really messing with something, say proportional or even multiplicative. And in the middle of it, you got to add some crazy numbers together. In that moment, I might just type those in I, yeah. or I, I might just type in because because my focus is on this bigger math, big thing over mm-hmm. here. And I just need this little calculation. Yeah, I might not take the time to go over there and do that. Um, another example, uh, we were in a meeting the other day and we were trying to do some business planning for our small team and and some some numbers came up, whatever. And somebody snarkily was like, Pam, what do you got for, you know, what's your what's your strategy for that? And I was like, I typed it in because yeah. in the moment we were thinking yep. about these big things and it yep. wasn't it, it wasn't a moment where I was trying to build my brain. It was a moment yep. where I was trying to do something with the number. Yeah. And I think, I, I think we want, we want kids to be able to feel that tension yeah. and, uh, and not just, uh, we all know what it means when a high school kid reaches for a calculator to add two plus three, yeah. I would submit that kid hasn't dealt with that tension. We need yeah. to, we need to put that tension up in front of the kids. Hey, I'm let me t- tell you this post note real fast. Ah, uh, okay, go. I got to tell I, you. I wrote down what I'm going to say. So I'm okay, well, hang on to go, it. Go, go, go. Okay. Um, so one of my kids was doing volume and surface area, lateral area, like uh, lateral surface area problems. Uh-huh. And and he was, and there was like a million, right? Like a whole bunch of them. Too and many. it got down to uh, which of these three have the same, which, which are, which have X and Y, Y and X, whatever. So he wrote down two pi times three times six for one of them. 2 pi times 4.5 times 12 for one of them, and 2 pi times 6 times 9. And, and the question was, which are the two have the same, I guess, as volume? Uh, and he started to pick up his calculator, or pull out decimos. And I went, I'm sorry, wait. <laughs> and he looked at it and he goes, oh, those are the same because double half. <laughs> nice. And then he goes, and the other one is a third as much. And I was Bam. like, there you go. Thinking, like, as teachers, we have to intercede sometime and say, think think i think you can think about this i think yeah i think you can i think yeah. you can yeah. yeah yeah or at least did you at least consider whether yeah. you could think about it or not hey the one thing i was going to say that i wrote down so i didn't wouldn't forget is um you know in the, in the advent of chat gpt um i'm finding it fascinating listening to to kids and maybe specifically my a couple of my own kids uh talk about how much fun they're having coming up with prompts mm-hmm. and and that's like becoming a whole science about how to come up with the best prompts yeah. And it really speaks to, in order to use chat GPT well, you have to think like yeah. you can't just say something and then take what it, it spits out, not, not to, not to use it well. Like it really, it, there is an art there and it, and it, it takes thinking to come up with the correct prompts to put in there. Yeah. Um, I've actually used it a couple of times uh, recently when I was trying to write some things and I couldn't figure out a way to say something. And what's been fun for me uh, to notice is I'll go in, I'll say, Hey, what's another way of saying blank. And it will give me, you know, a couple of ways. And then I'll say, try again and whatever. And I don't know that yet I've chosen exactly what it spit out, but it does help spark some ideas. Sure. Be- especially when I give it a better prompt, when mm-hmm. I go, Oh, I see what you heard me say. Let me try that again. Um, and so, yeah, it's all about helping us all become judicious users of technology. Yeah. So uh, we mentioned a couple of, you know, I, I think I've, brainstormed a little bit here about doing something at the beginning of a, of a time where kids are going to learn some strategy or like maybe midway to see if they can uh, see their own growth. Mm. Um, So I think there's a couple of different times that you could use this routine, but what's really important and valuable is the discussion that comes along with it. I think kids sharing how they solve the problems like, Oh, I, I did find a way that was really efficient. 
What I especially love, though, is when kids write their own. Oh, so when that is kids, a fantastic idea. Yeah, when kids are able to see outside of strategy and pick numbers for which strategies would work well, that's really, really So you're, you're suggesting that, uh, that you could actually say to kids, all right, we've played this game, mm-hmm. and you, you, you now you're like, okay, I beat the calculator. Oh, that one, you typed it in just mm-hmm. as fast as, okay, I wonder what strategy. That you're actually going to say to them, hey, you know strategies. Write some problems yeah. that you could figure using what you know quicker, faster, better than it, you would never type that in a calculator because you could just, that's mm-hmm. a fantastic task. I well, and aren't, aren't we always looking for something that we can extend Oh, you know, nice extension. Yeah. Nice yeah. extension. That's well done, Kim. Woo. I like it. I like it. Right. And then this is also an example of a routine that is repeatable because mm-hmm. like you said, it can, we can bring it up in different topics. And so once they kind of have the routine down, then we can kind of pick it back up and use it. Uh, and so that's a, a wonderful thing that we like. Uh, we don't like to spend time on stuff that we can't bring back up in different yeah. ways and tweak. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So one more routine that we both very much enjoy got some favorites, but this one might be raising to the top again for me. Might be coming to the top, depending on what we're talking about. Sweet. All right. Y'all, thanks for tuning in and teaching more and more real math. To find out more about the Math is Figureoutable movement, visit mathisfigureoutable.com. Let's keep spreading the word that math is figureoutable. Thank you for listening and making math more figureoutable. Y'all, Kim and I get so many questions. So many of you are encouraged and excited to teach math, real mathing, and we're doing our best to answer your questions in depth, but we can only do so much on the podcast. But there's so much more. Where can you learn all the things that you need to make math more figure outable? In our Building Powerful Mathematics online workshops. Find your best fit at mathisfigureoutable.com slash workshops. If you are a pre-K through 12 educator, we have a workshop for you. Here's a bit of a breakdown. If you are pre-K 2, check out Building Addition for Young Learners. Grades 2 and up, Building Powerful Subtraction. Grades 3 and up, Building Powerful Multiplication. Grades 4 and up, Building Powerful Division. Grades 5 and up, Building Powerful Proportional Reasoning. Grades 8 and up, Building Powerful Linear Functions. And our most recent for everyone, Building Powerful Fractions 1. You can find the best workshop for you and register at mathisfigureoutable.com slash workshops. Let's change the world together and make math more and more figure outable.